Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to this week's weekly wrap. So, we'll start with the uh, the US dollar, which uh, is front in front of us now. So, all charts will be on the daily time frame, so the D1 uh, on MetaTrader 5. So, dollar had a pretty decent week. Um, started out, we saw a good couple gains. Um, we've been a bit flat the last two days, but uh, Wednesday's session was pretty firm and um, we'll get into some of the reasons for that shortly and uh, to, be, to be honest with you this week has um, there has been some moves this week so oil has been moving a bit uh, some other currencies have seen some movements but a lot of markets have been in ranges and they've remained to, they've, uh, remained to uh, continue to trade in uh, ranges that we've been speaking about so the dollar you know even though it has been moving up it's sort of been grinding and um, we still do have um, a bit of resistance you know in some of these areas for it to clear before we can really start thinking that it has you know well and truly you know beaten this uh, downtrend so primarily the area is here and suffered that 105 area um, we need to see what happens if we get a test there and if we are able to see buyers break above it uh, there's a few things uh, going on but I think uh, the minutes this week gave us not a, a clear picture of what's going on but it sort of did give some more direction so we will just firstly just touch on some of the things um, that we saw this week and um, we'll just run over some of the key figures so the flash uh, services and manufacturing data for the UK came out better than expected so we saw a bit of a rally on the pound but that turned around uh, midweek and we've seen price still you know holding around here but we can see the price shape here it's it's quite average at the moment and um, to be honest with you it's not really doing anything um, we do have some support down here at 1.1986 uh, if we did break that level we'd look for a continuation lower but we are you know still seeing plenty of resistance up at these two points as well and it's just sort of a bit of a uh, common common theme across quite a few markets so we did see a bit of a disappointing uh, data for the German flash manufacturing PMI on Tuesday as well and this did have some effect on the German 30 so we can see um, it's a little bit better on the 4 hour but we can see that that move down here and it was quickly rebuffed and uh, we saw a rally uh, yesterday uh, as stocks sort of fought back but again we can just see this ongoing pattern that we've been discussing of uh, Price doing very little at the moment, and um, it's yeah, it's running across quite a few markets. It's, I wouldn't say it's uh, frustrating, but yeah, we do we would like to see if the market can break out of this uh, sooner rather than later to get some some direction again. After we've seen some you know some really nice moves, uh, you know, going back into last year. Um, at the moment, we are seeing this new uh, range, which is a bit deeper than this one at the moment. Um, it's a bit more prolonged as well, so. Hopefully we will see something that shakes it out, but yeah, for now we're just going to have to continue to deal with that. So, um, so more data-wise, um, for the CAD, uh, we saw CPI out of Canada. So we had um, a slight miss in Canadian CPI, but the median CPI year on year came in at five percent, which is slightly higher. Trimmed CPI came in at lower than expected as well, and um, the dollar CAD has had you know a flat week after. A little bit of a rally to start the week, we've seen a bit flat, but that was as well based on uh, oil prices as well dropping. Uh, another thing, if anyone can tell me why the second you start doing a video, things start getting itchy, I'd really love to know uh, if there's a reason for that, because it seems to happen to me on a regular basis. So, sorry, I just thought I'd share that thought, but it's quite frustrating uh, at times. So, moving along, um, we had the US flash services PMI which came out better than expected as well and the Aussie dollar we had a wage price index which missed expectations at 0.8% uh, the Aussie um, you know was reflected a bit with the US dollar we had two uh, decent days down uh, we've had a bit of a stalemate at the moment uh, today and yesterday and we are just looking at this area here uh, we did break this support but by, you know, sellers look to be running out of mojo right now. But we do have some data coming out tonight, and we'll have to see how uh, if that's going to have a bit of a factor in. This trend definitely remains down, and um, we are seeing, you know, sellers do still look to be in control at the moment. So 
it's not too much of a surprise when we look back at the dollar index and we can see that you know it is actually running in a trend um, on the short term. So uh, the Aussie yen as well, similar story there. Um, we've had that, those two declines and a bit of a stalemate going on at the moment. Do the report on the pound yen. Uh, we're hoping to we saw this breakout here a couple, you know, several days ago. Uh, broke out of these areas here, which was a good-looking move. Um, but we are, as there was a comment made on our trading view account that they did see it as a potentially as a false breakout. So at the moment, that could be the case. Um, we've seen a return back to the breakout area. Buyers are starting to remass at the moment, but we'd really need to see a new rally soon and a rally that breaks this level and continues upwards to really to really confirm that this is a breakout. So for now, we'll just continue to give it a bit of time. Now, um, we'll get on to the US 30 and some of the indexes uh, shortly. So we'll get on to some of the reasons that we did see some selling. Now, um, other, other aspects this week is the Kiwi. We saw the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand raise rates to 4.75% that was expected. Uh, the statement said that inflation still continues to be a bit of a worry, but they don't see any more real major rate rises unless things get uh, a lot more dire. And um, moving on, um, we had the, F so the F sorry, FOMC meeting minutes. Now, this did really lock in a bit of a, a bit of you know what's really well known is that inflation is still too high. Uh, it is cooling a touch, and they are going to continue with rate rises. There was a little bit of. Uh, you know, disagreement at the last meeting where some members wanted uh, 50 points, uh, but the majority of the members wanted 25 points, and I think that they all are agreeing at the moment on increases of 25 points with rate rises to continue. Uh, but the you know the key word there is inflation uh, is cooling, but still is too high, and um, that is sure the case with after looking at the recent data with CPI and etc. and uh, with the uh, you know, the very hot jobs uh, data we saw, you know, not long ago as well. Uh, the inflation the inflation story continues today. Uh, we have the PCE coming out. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, prelim GDP, uh, it fell uh, overnight, and we saw fall to 2.7% from expected 2.9%. So a bit of a decline there in US GDP over the quarter. And we did see the US 30 it moved the futures moved right down to 32773 but we did see a fight back uh, at the end of the session so uh, the nasdaq as well um, it fought back after testing some lows and it has at the moment that we still have these trend breaks that we're keeping an eye on these are pretty junky little rallies uh, they are common to see after a bit of a break lower so i suppose the focus now is on if we do see a new decline to sort of confirm this price pattern that we are seeing at the moment or if we are going to see buyers try and put up more defense. Uh, it's a similar story on the uh, S&P 500 and we can just see this small, very t you know, touchy rally after this initial decline has broken that trend. So we would like to know moving forward now if sellers are going to try another move. There is a heap of demand down in these areas here and we've seen a couple of attempts by sellers get uh, rejected and uh, prices move back up. So we really probably just want to see a strong move by sellers to really show that they are in control and this is actually a break or otherwise we're just going to continue to see a more range uh, bound price action uh, for the period, for the short term period. And over on the uh, US 30 as we just saw before, similar story there as well and um, we are seeing support at uh, 32,981 all the way up to you know, 33,035 and around about. So similar pattern though, um, we do have a bit of a break here and we just want to see what happens with this break and if we do see further selling uh, development. Now oil did see a bit of movement this week but price still really does remain uh, in this long term range. and. Uh, we can see here that we've had a bounce uh, yesterday. There's uh, plenty of demand and support down to 73, even you know to 73.64, and um, there's plenty of resistance up at uh, 79.51, and a bit more resistance here at 77.14. And we've seen you know sellers have a red hot go at pushing price down. This was uh, rejected yesterday, and we saw a fight back from that you know those support slash demand areas, and we're seeing a little bit of buying today at this point. So. 
again another range of our market that's sort of just chewing up a bit of time and um, gold we uh, we talked about gold today in a report we are trying to just watch this level just around here it's at 1820 uh, you know 60 to 9 to 1820 90 we are wondering if there is short-term support trying to form it's not the greatest uh, looking position but we have seen two points of rejection and some buying today and it does line up with this buy here which could could be offering you know a bit of a support zone there but we'll have to give it some time to see if we do get a bounce sort of confirming that now cryptocurrencies uh, this week we have seen a bit more a little bit more movement we've seen a couple of declines uh, we've seen pretty good resistance setting up here at 24.765 on bitcoin had a little bit of a test yesterday which failed and then we had that decline and that was a bit come on it looked quite good yesterday with that rally but uh, it wasn't to be and we saw a very strong fade and um, sort of reflective as well we are seeing a bit of congestion at the moment here uh, ethereum as well similar story with just a bit of a con congestion point here as well and we're just going to have to continue to give uh, the markets more time to see if we do get something to snap out. Any like strong push lower here that breaks this low and uh, closes lower, that could be a small sign that sellers are in control. But at the moment, we just still need a little bit more confirmation um, that something is uh, happening. So on to today. So we have core PC uh, price index this coming out at uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, I'm expecting 0.4%, so that's an increase from 0.3% on the last data. Uh, if this does beat expectations, that could you know, re, you know, continue to push the inflation um, driver and um, continue to push a bit of worry into the market, but if it misses, it may also have the reverse effect. So we'll have to see if it does come in hotter, if it does really impact the USD, or if it is not too much of a surprise. but. It could be interesting to see that one tonight, but um, and based on what happens with it. Now, moving on to next week, before we uh, wrap up today, we'll have a look at some of the key um, news that's coming up next week to keep an eye on. So, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we don't have too much. We have uh, Bank of Japan's new um, bank governor, um, Ueda, Ueda speaking. Sorry about my pronunciation. Wednesday, we have um, GDP from Canada. Uh, consumer confidence coming out in the US on Wednesday as well. CPI for Australia, which should be one to watch um, with the inflation worries that are currently going on here. And moving along in the week, we have uh, Governor Bailey speaking from, you, from the uh, Bank of England and the ISM Manufacturing PMI on Thursday. And that's really it. So more um, ISM Services PMI as well on Saturday. So not a huge week coming up next week. A couple of things to watch. Uh, definitely locally that the Australians will be watching the CPI data and if there is an increase that could continue to put more pressure on uh, the RBA and they're in a bit of a tricky position now publicly uh, and from their policy point of view so it'll be interesting to watch that CPI data next week so that's it I hope you have enjoyed today's uh, video please subscribe if you're enjoying our uh, content if you'd like to uh, stay up to date with what we're releasing, uh, we have a lot of guest speakers during the week, so it's always something you know, rather fresh and new. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll see what happens with the PCE uh, later today. Thanks again, good trading, and bye for now.